Um, our discussion tonight is on city deals, cultural cities and local resilience. Um, we, are, we know that city deals, which are funded by the Scottish UK government and local authorities, are focused on sustainable growth. Um, we're looking at how the cultural sector fits in uh, to that and how the cultural sector can uh, contribute to sustainable growth. Um, so the, we've got a fantastic range of panellists. Uh, first of all, we've got a short film from Arts and Business Scotland introduced by David Watt from Arts and Business Scotland. Uh, then we have um, Anna Young from the Glasgow Canal Project who'll tell us about that. We'll also hear from Julie Farr from Dundee Social Enterprise Network and Dame Shona Reid uh, who led the Cultural Cities Inquiry. I'm looking forward to hearing about that. And then we'll finish off with... Um, Another film uh, from the Sky Eco Museum, and that's focused on uh, the social enterprise and, and placemaking, which is obviously absolutely key to this, um, this particular topic. Um, I'm Julie Farr from Dundee Social Enterprise Network. So we are a network organisation based in Dundee. I'm um, part of the third sector interface in Dundee and we help support, develop and grow the social enterprises in the city. Gather that most people know what a social enterprise is, but just to um, make sure that you do, um, you know, it's a, a business that's delivering social objectives. So many of the um, social enterprises uh, across the across Scotland are set up as charities, skills or kicks, um, and they operate in their communities to deliver social objectives. So they're enterprising um, third sector organisations. Um, and then just to go on to the um, Tay Cities deal, um, as I say, the announcement was made just last September of the, the money that was going to come to the region, um, but it was two years previous that the pro um, organisations were asked to put their projects in and submit their bids, so it's been quite a delayed process. Um, and initially it was very much led by the local authority, it was very much local authority projects that went in, um, but laterally, um, and with a very tight time scale, it was opened out to the private sector and to the third sector. And they had, organisations had to act quickly and had to get bids in um, to the programme. So I'm not sure if you can read this, but it is, this is a list of the breakdown of the 300 million that's coming to, um, to the area. I did say 350 million, there's the separate 50 million for um, a transport project that the Scottish Government then announced after um, the, the 300 million bid was announced. But within that, I just wanted to pull out the two cultural um, projects. Well, one's a project, one is a programme. Now, um, I, w I would love to say that I actually led the cultural um, uh, um, Cities Inquiry, but I was a, a mere modest member of the advisory board. Um, and this was an initiative that was set up um, really by the Arts Council of England, although it then brought in the Arts Councils from the other, uh, other nations. The core and key cities networks across the whole of the UK, and it was chaired by Jane Ann Gadia, who was until recently the Edinburgh-based uh, CEO of, uh, of Virgin Money. Um, it published its report in February, and I do um, recommend, it's a very dense report, there's a huge amount in it, and I do recommend you reading it, because it's got a lot of, um, it's a lot of thoughtful analysis of what might be needed to, um, to, um, to fulfill the purpose of the inquiry. And the purpose of the inquiry was, and I quote, how to radically increase the abilities of our cities to use culture to drive inclusive growth. And part of that was how that in turn can invest and bring different lines of investment uh, into culture. Now culture was very much um, a definition that included both arts and heritage, um, and both were seen as equal equal partners. Cities. So this was the context in which the um, inquiry looked at this purpose of how to radically increase the ability of our cities to to use culture to drive inclusive growth, inclusive growth. 
Um, so it, 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 uh, it came up with a range of recommendations uh, focused on four areas. And I'm very briefly um, going to go through the four areas. Strategic local leadership, new investment models, greater diversity and more open career paths into creative industries, and place, particularly the smart use of property assets. So firstly, strategic local leadership. And to be quite honest, everything focuses on, on this. Everything is based. The ability to, to deliver most of the other recommendations are based on this. Namely, the report recommends that we establish local cultural city compacts. Now, as I say, that could be towns, uh, it could be city regions, but they have to come together, local partners across culture, higher education, business, health, local authorities, third sector, local planning partnerships, probably established in the first instance by local authority in the lead, but ultimately chaired by an independent. So thinking, um, coming up to more recent days, the turn of the century, uh, luckily the canal reopened with big investment through the Millennium Link, um, and then uh, further on again, um, closer to sort of 2006 and seven, with plans and proposals that were coming for to redevelop this area of North Glasgow. Um, plans at the time were quite kind of property, uh, property driven. It didn't really take into account the unique history of the of the area. It was about starting again, um, building um, sort of big iconic, big new buildings. But luckily, following the financial decline, there was a rethink in the approach, and a much more softer, organic method was adopted, um, and that recognised placing the canal and the unique heritage of the area at the absolute heart of it. Um, so the strategy then was about um, working with the existing organisations in the area and much more of a sort of facilitation rather than implementation approach. And I'd say that was one strand that was really important that's helped the development of the cultural cluster that's there today. So how does that all link into the city deal? Well, as you can see, much of the creation of this creative cluster already happened before the work of the city deal happened um, and the element of the city deal that's focusing on the north of Glasgow and um, I've given some about five examples here of how it's looking to benefit um, that area and it's all about opening up the north of Glasgow trying to undo some of the damage that the M8 and that deindustrialization presented to the area so one of the examples is the smart canal scheme and that's a flood mitigation scheme which is going to use the canal to absorb some of that additional flood water that currently is flooding to five areas around North Glasgow, which has meant that land is unstable, it can't be used for development. So by using the canal in that way, that stabilises these areas and they can now be used for development going forward. There's been lots of ground preparation work in a number of key sites, including Dundas Hill. And over the next kind of 10, 15 years, there's going to be house building around 2,000 houses. There's a new bridge link going in across the M8, dubbed the Street in the Sky, and that will re replace and improve the current pedestrian links into the city, which really leave a lot to be desired. So that will really broker that sort of gap between the north and the city centre. Lots of public realm works also happening um, around our sort of sports hub, the Pinkston Basin, reconnecting the canal to one of our sites, um, Site Hill. And as always, Glasgow's recognised for a long time the role of culture in its regeneration. So things such as public art installations are a key part of any development that's taking um, that's going to take place. Um, our ambition is to is to help bring creative thinking to the workplace and to create marketplace opportunities for the cultural and business sectors to connect and thrive. And one of the ways that we do this is through the Culture and Business Fund Scotland, or CBFS as we call it. So the CBFS was launched by the Cabinet Secretary for Culture, Tourism and External Affairs in April 17 as a new incentive fund to build upon the success of the new art sponsorship grant scheme, which between 2006 and 17 generated investment of about seven and a half million pounds into over 500 individual arts and heritage projects across Scotland. The aim of the scheme is to encourage businesses to sponsor cultural activity for the first time, to entice businesses back who have not sponsored for the last two years, to support cultural organisations and build new business sector partnerships, to attract non-Scottish businesses to support cultural activities in the country, 
and encourage businesses to, to sponsor activity over a two or three year period. I went to meet Alan Harty from Richmond Oaks and talked to him about the work that the National Ensemble uh, at Scottish Youth Theatre, the work that they do. He was just really captivated by the commitment and the confidence of those young people. The idea of getting involved with Scottish Youth Theatre seemed like a really great opportunity. I mean, we've got to know the cast, for example.